Welcome to this week's Science and Spirituality, where in the first in the three-part series, we highlight the highly intriguing work of Russian biophysicist, inventor, and pioneer of the innovative scientific field called electrophotonics, Dr. Konstantin Karatkov. Dr. Karatkov, who is based in St. Petersburg, Russia, invented the gas discharge visualization or GDV technique by which the energy fields emanating from humans may be viewed in real time. Among other areas, GDV is being applied in predictive medicine. Those trained to use a GDV device can detect health issues, so clients can make lifestyle changes to resolve the condition or receive medical care from a doctor right away. Dr. Karatkov is also the author and co-author of several books, including Measuring Energy Fields, State of the Science, Science Aura and Consciousness, New Stage of Scientific Understanding, and Light After Life. Let's now welcome Dr. Karatkov to our show. Uh, my name is uh, Konstantin Karatkov. I am professor of a national research university in Russia dealing with technical science. At the same time, I am deeply involved in uh, testing athletes, uh, Olympic teams, Paralympic teams, and consulting worldwide uh, for health issues for different health centers. For many years, I worked in Soviet Union in different governmental projects in science uh, related to laser optics, quantum physics, solid state physics. At the same time, I was very interested in uh, Oriental philosophy, in Oriental wisdom, in Chinese medicine. Finally, I came to understanding that without uh, understanding energy, without understanding human spirit, we can't uh, get real understanding of the world. We have many types of energy and we can measure it with many different instruments. As the current era advances, science is venturing into new frontiers to explore what's beyond the physical dimension and being used to reaffirm the teachings of ancient spiritual texts. Many scientists have acknowledged that we are more than biological, physical and chemical entities and are indeed also divine spiritual beings. It is recorded in the book of Genesis that God said, let there be light. In ancient traditions, they tell about different layers of energy field from physical point of view. Those are frequencies. So we emanate light, we emanate frequency in a very big range, and we can divide this range into some specific parts as we do in our software. But again, from scientific point of view, it's mostly for convenience, because in reality it's continuous spectrum. One of the uh, instruments to measure energy are bioelectrography instruments. It was in 1777 when German physicist found that in electrical field you can see light coming from some subjects. Uh, it is all related to electricity and photons. Our team was able to transform this to a new stage. So it is transformation from photography to digital computer processing and digital analysis. So we study light emanated by different subjects in electrical field. The question is whether it's possible to study this light without electrical field. Yes, it's possible. Those are uh, self-emanating photons. So we all emanate light. And this light comes both from living beings and from inanimated subjects. Dr. Karatkov and his colleagues have conducted much research to demonstrate to the world that the gas discharge visualization technique has many applications in the medical field. From the very beginning we had clinical studies with GDV camera in uh, top-level hospitals, universities, first in Russia, then in the United States, we collected a lot of clinical data. And based on this clinical data, we can uh, have statistical information, good health, disease, 
uh, disturbances in health by reading light coming from fingers doctors can predict weak points of the human organism and this is very important because our aim not to treat the illness but to prevent it if we can detect problem on a very early stage we can prevent it and don't allow it to develop to some disease it's very well known if you can catch for example cancer an early stage it may be treated uh, very efficiently we work in the line of predictive medicine medicine of health and our aim to give people information and recommendations what should be done to keep them healthy for a long time uh, for example in our medical academy uh, they made study on uh, people after surgery and they found that by measuring energy they can predict the outcome of surgery it's very important because uh, it's very important for doctors to define whether this particular person can survive surgery or it's better to leave it uh, as it is a lot of people mostly elderly people after surgery may become very depressive so it is really very unpleasant and dangerous by measuring energy we can predict this condition and then take precautions by measuring uh, people energy it is mathematically possible to define the probability of uh, hypertension we have a big line of uh, research with our oncological uh, institute of Russia with top level professors interested in maintaining uh, in people so uh, by monitoring people week after week after treatment we can really see how they are developing and we can prescribe treatment to improve their conditions why does the gas discharge visualization technique specifically measure the energy emanating from the client's hands? Dr. Karatkov now explains the reason. Our hands and our fingers are the most sensitive parts of our body. We have the most amount of sensors compared with all other parts of the body. And we have the highest part of sensitive uh, area in our brain related to hands and fingers. It is possible to connect information on fingers with Chinese meridians. We created a map of correlation between fingers and meridians. Then it was clinically verified on thousands of patients. Our Supreme Master Television correspondent had a gas discharge visualization technique assessment done to measure his health status. Let us now find out the results. We see here beautiful the Entladungen and um these fingers around. Now the computer the computer these Daten and shows us in a bild that the human body shows. So now it's about to get these recordings to be able to interpret them. And we see here in this area the pixel that tells us these light points. And that gives us a value of the energy. We have here 13,000 pixels and a symmetry of 82%. The symmetry means the spreading of right and left. Um, eine Energie von 82 bis 100 Prozent ist gut. Dieses Bild zeigt den psychischen Zustand und auf der rechten Seite den physischen Zustand. Im physischen Bereich sind wir hier bei 28.000 Lichtpunkten und bei einer Symmetrie von 94 Prozent. Das heißt, im körperlichen Bereich ist der Klient topfit. So, uh, by measuring fingers and uh, images or light coming from the fingers, we recreate in the computer the model of the energy field around the body. And it was tested in many, many experiments. We have a lot of people in the world who can see energy, who can see auras. So we correlated our measurement with their vision. 
and it was proven that it's really very high correlations. When we have some holes in energy field, those holes may be some weak functional activity of the organ and system. So, uh, the difference between our instrument, our approach, and ultrasound or tomography, we don't look to the structure of the organ. We look to its functional activity. If you eat appropriate food, you are absolutely in good condition. If you eat wrong food, then it creates a lot of negative uh, emotions, a lot of negative feelings. Our diet affects not only our physical health, but also our mental, psychological, and spiritual well-being. Since time immemorial, sages and enlightened masters have strongly advocated the avoidance of animal flesh. When animals are slaughtered, they go through tremendous trauma, anxiety, and fear. So when meat is consumed by humans, the animal's negative, agonized energies are transferred into the meat eaters' bodies, influencing their energy fields. Over time, this distortion in the energy fields results in illness and disease. In general, the main factor that influence energy field, those are anxiety and stress, a negative factor in life. You may have anything from environment, changing of conditions, but it may have very low influence compared with your own inner peace. If people don't have peace and calm in their soul, never their energy field would be in good conditions. If people don't have means to calm their mind, their consciousness, then of course they have a lot of troubles. Our negative emotions influence not only our own field, our own system, but it has influence to other people as well. So people who are in bad negative condition, in bad mood, in negative mood, they send this condition outside to the environment, to other people. More and more physicians and other health experts are encouraging people to switch to a plant-based diet for optimal health and longevity. Avoiding meat, dairy and eggs rids our bodies of the pressure and negative energy transmitted from these animal products to our cells. On numerous occasions, Supreme Master Ching Hai has spoken about why an organic vegan diet should be embraced by everyone around our world. As in this May 2008 video conference held in Seoul, South Korea. Now vegetarian diet is benevolent, so it will bring you happy energy. And that in turn will breed more happiness, will attract more happiness, and when you're happy, Everything will be better. Our sincere thanks, Dr. Konstantin Karatkov, for introducing us to the amazing gas discharge visualization technique. Your research is truly uniting science and spirituality. For more information on Dr. Karatkov, please visit www.new.karatkov.org. Dr. Karatkov's book, Light After Life, a Scientific Journey into the Spiritual World is available at www.amazon.com. The seers, the sages, and the pure in the heart can see our aura. If we do something right, we are God realized. We are God, uh, loving and one with God. Our aura is golden, is brilliant. If we do something wrong, we hurt other people emotionally, physically, or mentally, or spiritually, our aura is dark. People can see us, we cannot cheat. That's why we have to keep ourselves beautiful. Welcome to this week's Science and Spirituality, where in the second in a three-part series we highlight the highly intriguing work of Russian biophysicist, inventor, and pioneer of the innovative scientific field called electrophotonics, Dr. Konstantin Karatkov. 
one of the uh, instruments to measure energy are bioelectrography instruments. It was in 1777 when German physicists found that in electrical field you can see light coming from some subjects. Uh, it is all related to electricity and photons. Our team was able to transform this to a new stage. So it is transformation from photography to digital computer processing and digital analysis. In electrophotonics, now after 15 years of development, we have developed it to a very high uh, technological status, using a lot of computer processing. All information that we have, it is based on non-linear mathematics, modern image processing, the Gas Discharge Visualization, or GDV technique, invented by Dr. Karatkov, allows for the real-time study of energy fields, or auras, emanating from humans and other objects. In today's discussion, he'll cover some of the properties of these energy fields, as well as explore the realms of consciousness and intention. In his scientific investigations, Dr. Karatkov has discovered that the energy field that each of us has varies in size by time of day. He now explains more. Uh, we have a notion of cycle, of activity for everybody. Typically, we, have, we start from low uh, amplitude to higher amplitude during the day. Then we came to low again by 5, 6 p.m. It's normal, typical cycle. It's related to the activity of sun, uh, so it's uh, related to light. And of course, this cycle good when the person is in good health. When there are some disturbance, for example, you change your uh, time by flying or you change your time uh, by some different behavior. Uh, you don't sleep at night, you work hard at night, uh, you drink, you smoke. And then, of course, it can change the cycle. So, for healthy people, for children, the cycle is very clearly presented. One way to expand our energy field is through exposure to the sun. Everything that we have around us, those are originated from sun, from photons. Because uh, plants accept photons, then they use water and air, and they create matter. So, uh, of course, sun is one of the obligatory essence for our life. Studies by many renowned scientists have shown that our intentions or thoughts are enormously powerful and affect our energy field, as well as the energy fields of those around us. Dr. Karatkov has performed much research regarding this phenomenon. Energy it is one of the key notions of science. Energy can transform to one form to another. We are now have understanding that we can generate our inner energy by our mental intention, by our mental force. And this, of course, is the topic of new science, new biophysics. And we are developing this both from conceptual point of view and from practical point of view, from instrumentations. We really the masters of our energy field. Uh, energy field strongly depends on anxiety, on stress. So if people have in, uh, in anxiety, if they trouble about something all the time, if they have negative emotions, negative thoughts, then it will have tremendous influence on their energy field. So you can change your own inner world, you can come to inner peace, you can get rid of negative thoughts, negative emotions, then you may have really strong energy field. And the first indication, those are dreams. If you have positive dreams, interesting dreams, then you are in positive state. Some people have very strong, powerful energy field, and if they send negative information, then this negative information may uh, has tremendous influence to other people. So, it is very important to understand that by our intention, by our uh, mood, we influence the world. 
we influence other people and we can really change condition of other people around ourselves. We have a lot of experiments on uh, how people uh, interact with each other and how they influence each other. And we really can measure how people change other energy field with their own energy field. Uh, we can tell about the energy of love. If it is conditional love or non-conditional love, then it has tremendous influence to energy field and uh, well-being of a person. Now it is proven in many experiments that when children are raised up in love, they are much more healthy, much more established in their life compared with children who are raised up without care, without real love. So it is experimentally proven. Science now acknowledges the existence of a vast ocean of cosmic energy that embraces all the planets, stars, moons, and celestial objects in the universe. The same energy field, sometimes referred to as an intelligent cosmic consciousness, connects us to everyone and everything else in the cosmos. Now, in uh, the 21st century, we finally start developing the science of consciousness. A lot of people with high spiritual level, high consciousness level, have very strong, very powerful energy field. When people achieve this level of consciousness, they create for themselves very good energy field. You can do it in real life, in everyday life. It's possible then you will have same type of energy field as the most sacred uh, saint. Through the operation of the conscious sea of energy around us, the entire universe manifests and unfolds according to our thoughts, dreams, ideas and intentions. In the Bible, our heavenly nature is affirmed in the following verse. I said, you are gods, you are all sons of the Most High. Psalm 82, verse 6. We are truly participants in the evolution of the universe, our world, and the space we occupy in the vastness of the material dimension. Dr. Karatkov's work makes us aware that our focused intentions play an important role in influencing physical reality and the direction of our world. And in our research we have uh, a lot of experiments where we try to prove that our intention, our conscience has absolutely direct influence to the world. It's a new line of science that is trying to prove that our consciousness has absolutely clear influence to generations. So uh, how you raise your children in which um, I would say condition in which, not material, but uh, uh, consciousness condition, spiritual condition, will influence their development in, in their lifespan. So, consciousness may have influence to energy. Consciousness may change material world. And this is very, very important message for humankind, for people, to get this understanding that with our consciousness we really govern our world. Dr. Karatkov is also the author and co-author of several books including Measuring Energy Fields, State of the Science, Science, Aura and Consciousness, New Stage of Scientific Understanding and Light After Life. Light After Life takes a close look at the afterlife I have a special book published, Light After Life, and it's published in different languages. It was a big series of experiments in human energy in life stage, and what would be the transformation of energy after death. It was inspired by a book of Raymond Mondi, who uh, describes the process of uh, transition from life to death. So we did a big series of experiments, in clinical environment with a big team of doctors supervising this process and it was found that after this uh, we have this transformation of energy so it's not the end of everything 
it is transformation. We can tell about transition from life to death. We can tell about threshold when people transform to another state. And now we know that there are a lot of cases when people can pass this threshold but then come back. So it was found that uh, energy has the cycle of transformation after death and finally it comes to some uh, inanimated state. So we interpreted it as the process of separation between our informational self or between our soul and physical body. It takes several days, it depends on different conditions, and this is the process of separation. In all religious traditions, there are the process how people separate from this world to another world. Those who study reports of near-death experiences also state that death is a transition, the end of one journey and the beginning of another. This matches what those who practice meditation say regarding the soul leaving the body on the physical plane and entering the astral plane or higher. Um, I've been discussing with people in Tibet, in India, who practice this journey to another state. Uh, they tell that it's possible to travel outside of the body, can train uh, your uh, spirit, your soul to travel outside of the body. But please don't try to go to another uh, world. Uh, for any spiritual practice, of course, you need a teacher. And this oriental tradition to have a good teacher. We try to establish a bridge between Western science understanding of nature and oriental wisdom. We're grateful to you, Dr. Konstantin Karatkov, for opening new avenues to scientific research connecting the physical and unseen worlds of energy, cosmic consciousness, and intentions. Your research has shown that as we delve more deeply into the profound nature of science, we come face to face with our spiritual essence our higher self. For more information on Dr. Karatkov, please visit www.new.karatkov.org. Welcome to this week's Science and Spirituality where in the conclusion of a three-part series, we continue to highlight the very intriguing work of biophysicist, inventor, and pioneer of the innovative scientific field called electrophotonics, Dr. Konstantin Karatkov, who is based in St. Petersburg, Russia. Dr. Karatkov is also the author and co-author of several books, including Measuring Energy Fields, State of the Science, Science, Aura and Consciousness, New Stage of Scientific Understanding, and Light After Life. The Gas Discharge Visualization, or GDV technique invented by Dr. Karatkov, allows for the real-time study of energy fields, or auras, emanating from humans and objects. One of the uh, instruments to measure energy are bioelectrography instruments. It was in 1777 when German physicist found that in electrical field you can see light coming from some subjects. Uh, it is all related to electricity and photons. Our team was able to transform this to new stage. So it is transformation from photography to digital computer processing and digital analysis. Dr. Karatkov's research on the unseen world of energy fields and consciousness is yet another example of science bringing us a closer understanding of our true divine nature and innate creative powers. The connection with uh, universal power, informational field, is a very complicated topic. Uh, we were able to measure a lot of people who have this excess, this connection. Uh, it was done in special experiments. A very special connection comes in altered state of consciousness. At some moments, if you are 
deeply in meditative state or if you can transform to this altered state of consciousness, you may have this connection. And it's not only for saints, those are same for artists, for musicians, for poets, for scientists, for engineers, businessmen, high management people. It's the main process of inspiration and of creativity. Einstein wrote a lot about spiritual topics, about connections to God. Newton was a very spiritual person. Mendeleev got his vision of Mendeleev table in his dream. Uh, so it is uh, very typical for a lot of scientists, uh, creators, musicians, poets. This is the way of creativity. Just as all human beings and animals emanate energy fields, so do plants and even inanimate objects like water. Since time immemorial, spiritual teachers have spoken of a universal energy that permeates all of creation. The energy field, this is quantum property of nature. So any subject has energy field quantum properties and on quantum level we are the same we are just the same as uh, stones the same as minerals that's why we are measuring energy from water and this very interesting line of study uh, we are measuring uh, different subjects uh, in nature and we are measuring environment with special sensors Truly, as science delves more deeply into the unknown through such experiments, we're rediscovering that we're not limited by the boundaries of the material world. The main uh, message that I got from our measurements in 15 years, that we have our consciousness power, our mind power. With this power, we can recreate our life. We can strongly influence our energy field and we can really change our life next our uh, environment that we live in water air food environmental station and next level those are the level of intercommunication with us uh, we have special sensors that allow us to take measurements in the energy of environment and i've been traveling uh, in different parts of the world in south america southeast asia Russia, Siberia, Africa, and everywhere we were looking for the places of high energy. It was always the places of worship. As we've been measuring in uh, churches, in monasteries, in temples, in different countries, in different religions. And everywhere we found that those are places of very high energy. A lot of these places are being used as healing places. People coming there, they increase energy and they can be treated with, from different problems. Because this is the use of energy of the earth. And ancient people were able to feel this energy. And they were selecting special places. With our instrument we can measure this. And without any doubts, our earth has its own energy field. Earth is communicating with the environment, with space, with cosmos. Dr. Karatkov has also investigated the power of people across the globe uniting in thought, prayer or meditation to achieve a common, constructive purpose. If you have positive attention, if you have positive attitude to life, to environment, to other people, then you make life around yourself much more positive, really can change environment. As we are collective beings, as we have our collective informational field, together we can do a lot. Of development in spirituality is collective process. If we include more and more people in this collective spiritual process, it would allow to change the consciousness of the humankind. People will collect together and meditate and pray for peace. And I believe that this is how uh, spirituality may be developed. We did many experiments of this kind. Uh, so it's possible to measure collective meditation. And we did these experiments in different countries. We put this sensor in the room where people are meditating. 
and we immediately see the effect when we have collective consciousness. We have more and more strong influence to the world. And of course it's important to have the positive direction. Then positive collective consciousness would tremendously influence our environment. In the quest to modernize and improve our technological status, humanity unfortunately has become disconnected from the very source that has sustained our lives and nurtured us. As Earth citizens, we have regretfully neglected our duty to be good stewards of the environment. It's only the beginning of the process of the influence of humankind to the Earth. We did a lot of harm to the Earth. In the ocean you can find big areas that is uh, contaminated with garbage. We need to change the attitude of humankind to the environment and then it will be possible for the Earth to restore and embrace humankind as a part of nature. Organic vegetables, fruits, grains, beans, seeds and nuts are grown without the use of harmful chemicals and are thus the most environmentally friendly foods for enhancing the well-being of both humans and our planet. Cultivation of vegan organic crops reduces the damaging carbon dioxide in the atmosphere by absorbing this greenhouse gas in the soil. Different type of food. It's absolutely different energy. Uh, organic apple and apple grown uh, chemically. Absolutely different energy. Uh, organic plant and uh, chemically grown plant of tremendous difference. So now we live in dangerous world. We have so many chemicals around ourselves that it poisons the whole generations. Those chemicals, they create epigenetic transformation of humankind. And this is dangerous. This is very bad. Now, epigenetically, new generation of babies has a lot of allergies. Why? Because of contaminations in food. It comes from parents eating this chemical food. We need to understand that uh, we have passed this chemical century. 20th century was a century of chemicals. And people were thinking that by transforming chemicals we can create new medications, new plastic things, uh, we can create new food, it will be great for humankind. It was found, no. We need to come to nature. We need to use the power of nature. It's very interesting. In uh, St. Petersburg, around Soviet time, they used to uh, use a lot of chemicals in farming, in agriculture. And our forest was practically empty. No animals, no bees, no butterflies. Now they don't use chemicals anymore. They are transforming to natural farming. And there are a lot of animals. More and more every year. This year we had many butterflies in our fields, in our forest. We have a lot of foxes, rabbits, uh, different activity in the forest. It means that after we stop this chemical contamination of nature, nature can recreate itself. And it's not only for animals, it's for ourselves as well. So we need to get this as a message, as a lesson. Supreme Master Ching Hai frequently speaks about how a global shift to an organic plant-based diet is the best way to preserve our planet, as in this excerpt from a November 2009 interview by Radio Formula QR 92.3 FM that is based in Cancun, Mexico and serves the state of Quintana Roo. We need to rethink our lifestyle we have to rethink the whole planet, uh, species and survival, not just uh, for our enjoyment uh, day to day or momentarily. We have to think uh, very unselfishly, as you have said. Yes, just to be vegan is very simple. That saves all the lives on the planet, save the animals, save the environment, and save the world for our children future. 
from the betterment of human relations to creating peace among nations and restoring the environment. Science now acknowledges what ancient spiritual traditions have long understood, that humankind has the power to steer the course and fate of our planet. Dr. Konstantin Karatkov, the implications of your studies on human consciousness and intentions are both meaningful and powerful. We appreciate the time taken from your busy schedule to speak to us about your admirable work that blends science and spirituality. May your fine research continue to inform the world on these important issues in the future. For more information on Dr. Karatkov, please visit www.new.karatkov.org. Dr. Karatkov's book, Light After Life, A Scientific Journey into the Spiritual World, is available at www.amazon.com. Thoughtful viewers, thank you for joining us today for the conclusion of our discussion with Dr. Karatkov. Up next on Supreme Master Television is Words of Wisdom after Noteworthy News. May we always be in touch with the Universal Consciousness. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash ss.